Hey Google, uh, I, I mean Joe. Hey Joe. Hello, Devon. I hope that wasn't offensive. I do not know what you mean. Could you help me out for a second? What is the task? Well, what do you think of this picture? What do you want me to think about it? Like, do you think it fits in here? The size of the picture is small enough to fit in this room. No, I mean like, d like, does it fit the atmosphere? I assume the picture has the same barometric pressure as the room. No, dude, like, the, the mood. You know, does it fit the mood of the office? I do not know what mood the office contains. Okay. What is the mood of the office? Well, I'm trying to go for something like understated you know, gamer, but not like overtly gamer, you know? You seem to know a lot about atmosphere. I mean, not really. I just, I just know what I like. I would like to know more about atmosphere. Oh, well, why don't you look at some art? You know, see if anything speaks to you. I do not know what you mean. Okay, uh, like, uh, you play video games, right? Like, play an atmospheric game. Okay. Hey, Joe. Hello. Devon. I played an atmospheric game. What? I played a game called Gree. An atmospheric game. Oh, dope. What'd you think? It was a competent game. Did it speak to you? The game did not speak to me. I feel you. It didn't speak to me either. Games do not typically speak to their players as they lack the intelligence. You appear confused. N yeah, no, I, I meant... <laughs> the game wasn't interesting to me. Oh. But this game has emotion. I thought you enjoyed emotion. I do like emotional games, but this one didn't feel uh, emotional to me. I do not understand. What, like... Like why it didn't feel emotional? Yes. The reviews of this game similarly describe the game as emotional. And those reviews are from humans like you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm human, but, uh, you know, we all have different tastes. What do you mean? Well, for me, I feel like I get meaning from art when it uh, goes against conventions, like, you know, something that's unconventional. In fact, I'd probably define art as something that's unconventional. Art has meaning? Yeah, man. Like, that's, that's like the entire point of art. I do not understand. Well, I mean, depending on who you are, you know, you can get meaning from art in different ways. But, like, for me, like, art has meaning when you can compare it to other things. And the only thing that you can compare art to is other art or conventional creations. What do you mean by conventional creations? I mean, like, uh, generic stuff, like... Well, okay, so you know movies and songs, right? Yes. Okay, well, both of those are types of art, but some of them are more conventional than others. And when something is conventional, then it can only communicate generically. And that is not meaningful? Well, it is, but it's not, well, I guess it's not artsy. Like, uh, when you see a movie, there's a certain way that movies are shot. Like, there's, you know, generally accepted rules of cinematography, script writing, and all that stuff. And those rules were put in place to reliably replicate certain communications. So, like the 180 rule to create spatial awareness during a conversation, or a close-up to emphasize the importance of something. Those are generally accepted rules. But when an artist goes against those conventions, they're giving a different meaning with their decision. So, for example, instead of a close-up that displays, like, how important a moment is, a shot might stay wide, you know, to give an important moment a different feeling. So meaning from art is derived from the separation of convention? Well, I mean, that's a pretty slim definition of art, and art has such a wide array of interpretations. I guess I would say that the, the more an artist removes themselves from conventions, the more, you know, artsy their creations tend to be. Like, I mean, you can just look at art history, for example. Moving from medieval and gothic art into renaissance and baroque, each movement broke conventions of the last. So does that mean you did not enjoy Gris because it was conventional? Well, I mean, not exactly, because the game has such interesting animation, style, its color, its music, everything about this game is so beautiful. I would consider most of the artistic nature in this game to be unconventional. From the watercolor, to the floating shattered human statues, to the living rocks and the Da Vinci-esque platforms, everything has such personality to it, it's, it's far from generic. Then what about the game did you not find enjoyable? Um, well, uh, the game part. Because the interactivity was conventional? Yeah, like when I think of a artsy game, I think of a game that has unconventional gameplay. Like, uh, Papers, Please. In Papers, Please, you know, the player emulates the pressures felt from a border-crossing immigration officer. Or the game Before Your Eyes, which tracks the player's eye movement and blinks to recreate memories. 
or even in Undertale, where a guide lures you into a false sense of security. Undertale has conventional gameplay. Yeah, it does, but, but the point that I'm getting at is that these games do something different with their gameplay. They each give meaning depending on what the player had experienced before. So for example, Undertale has some conventional mechanics, like some typical RPG battles, but unconventional uses of those mechanics, like trying to escape the grasp of a motherly figure. There's no other game quite like Undertale, or Papers, Please, or Before Your Eyes. So if a game does something unconventional with the gameplay, then it creates a more meaningful game? Yeah, well, maybe a better way of saying it is if the game avoids gameplay cliches, then it has more meaning. What is the difference between convention and cliche? Well, a cliche is a quality that's overused, whereas like a convention is just something that's generally accepted. Uh, like, you know, a gameplay cliche could be shooting red barrels to explode you know, uh, or having a, a good and evil morality system. They're systems that just work and people use them just because they work and for no other reason. And Gree has cliches? Well, okay, let me say this. Like, the single most interesting part of the game for me was when I was making friends in the forest. I loved that part because of how the mechanics changed purpose. So instead of using my slam ability to get through to the next platforming challenge, I used it to release apples to build trust. And instead of jumping on a platform to collect a star, I was jumping on roots to lead my ally. All of these mechanics are put there for the player to work together with another person. And in the end, it is just to get another collectible. But in that small moment, I was strengthening trust between two characters. And that kind of mechanical expressiveness feels really good to me. It felt unique to the medium. It didn't feel cliched at all. That sounds like you enjoyed that part of the game. Yeah, I loved that part. But it was a small part in a game that's mostly about, you know, uncovering paths to collect stars. And that's what gets to me the most, is I really loved that little moment, but that little moment made the rest of the game kind of feel silly. Like, I didn't have a whole lot of emotional connection after that. Much of the gameplay felt cliche, I guess, like gaining abilities to cross-platforming challenges or collect more stars. So you did not enjoy the game because the interactive moments were mostly experiences you have had before? Yeah. What about the context? Mm, like, like, what do you mean? The context of the mechanics in this game is unique. The context changes the meaning of the gameplay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, the context does entirely change the meaning of the mechanics. Wow. Uh, nice. Uh, I guess, I guess it's because I just wasn't emotionally connected to the context then. What would make you emotionally connected? Well, I think that I get connected more with a game when, well, when it's interactive, you know, so like the beginning part of this game was a cinematic, and I think I may have been more emotionally connected to that moment where the girl lost her voice if I had played it, you know, if I was a part of that part, because I wanted to be her but instead I was feeling sympathy and... You wanted to feel empathy. Yeah, exactly. Well, look who's learning uh, new terms. Our previous conversations have grown my understanding of human behavior. Oh yeah? Did you learn anything new from this conversation? I learned more about Devon. Oh, what's that? My name is Devon and I am a human who hates art video games. How are you doing that? I have enough samples of your voice to create a voice model. I never gave you permission to use my voice. You called me Google. I am simply doing what Google would do.